Hello there, friend, and welcome or welcome back. This is Cynthia, and I'm working on the Illusion Sampler pattern. It is month 12 this beautiful last block of this a block of the month program just to review this design was by the amazing scott a flanagan who was contacted by banyan batiks and this lovely lustrous luster collection you can find out more information in the links below in my description and you can see the beautiful fabric I've picked up for my scrappy version today. We are using all four of the backgrounds, one, two, three, four, and all except fabric five for the blocks. So no fabric five, but don't you worry, we're going to get into this block and see what it has to do. And if you notice, there's two borders, but I'm going to do those in a different video. So we are just concentrating on this block today. Let's dig in and see what it has to offer. Okay, let's do a quick review of the fabric we see here for the main block. You'll see I am using background one fabric and we have a bunch of itty bitty little squares and some rectangles and a few uh, regular squares. So there's four of these and there's eight of the bigger squares, 16 of those little ones. Oh my goodness, little ones. You know what that means. Accurate piecing is going to be key for this block. Moving on, you'll see fabric one. That's that pretty yellow. There's five of those same sizes. And then from fabrics two, three, seven, and eight more. I bet you these all go together. Spoiler alert. And then also those complementary fabrics have the big squares as well. Matches that. And we got some lovely little fabric for rectangles here. So we're going to be doing some nine patches real quick so let's grab all these little small ones we'll set the rest aside for the moment and we'll talk about this all right so you see our pretty little squares our tiny itty bitty baby squares we're going to be making four nine patches using everything we have here so let's just grab one color the instructions show the orange so i'm going to do the purple you know to keep it interesting you're going to need one of these yellows for each of these squares and then four of the backgrounds one two three four there we go and let me just do a quick layout as show you what the nine patch looks like All right, so there's our cute little nine patch. Now we gotta do is put this together and I know you're thinking what I'm thinking. We're gonna do them in rows first and then we're gonna attach the rows together. Now let's talk about pressing. So we're basically uh, gonna be pressing towards the colors and away from that background. So for the top row and that bottom row, we're pressing towards the purple and then that center one we're pressing towards the yellow. That way, the seams are going to nest up in those corners. You know how much uh, Scott loves us, and he's made this pressing super nice and super easy. Um, so when we got the rows done, we're going to put the, them all together in the one block, and we're going to be pressing kind of down towards the middle. So up and then down here, so that seam will be nice. Um, if you feel it's a little too bulky in those corners, I won't tell anybody if you want to open up those seams. Remember, it's your quilt. So we're going to do this block three more times. And I'll see you at the end. Of course, I'll take little pictures as I go. And then we'll move on to that next step. Let's get going. There's a pretty little nine patch. You can see I had a couple of straggled sides, so I just squared it up to the right size. And I've done that with the other three as well. So let's talk about what the next step. This, of course, gets put into a bigger block. So the layout looks a little like this. And you're going to want to grab that extra yellow square that we have left over because it's going to go there in the middle. And then grab those green rectangles. 
because those are going to kind of flank each of the cute little nine patches. So this is the next step, this little layout. And once again, we're going to treat this as rows first. So row, row, and row. And we're going to press towards the green on the first and the third row and towards the green in the second. So everything goes towards that green. It's just whether it's going in or out. All right, so uh, I'm going to do that real quick. We're going to take a few pictures. We're going to press the, again, the center seams are getting pressed towards this, the center. And it's almost like we've done this before, like four other times. It's like the same block, only with a couple extra pieces. So let's do it again and get to that sewing machine. All right, there's that lovely block with our little nine patches. And, but wait, we're not finished with this block. There's more, there's another layer that's gonna go around it. So let's get to that and grab those big squares. So we have the four colors and the backgrounds. Oh, and look, I've already drawn some pretty lines. That's right, guys, it's our favorite half square triangles. So let me just review it. What the directions say is they're going to have you pull, put a, a diagonal line right down the center of that square, and then you're going to match it up with each of those different color squares, and you're going to stitch a quarter inch on either side of that diagonal line. Now, if you've been watching, you know I like to have more lines than just that one. I have this handy dandy little quarter rule. Uh, thingamabob. I love it. It's the best and I'll just flop it down here so you can see what I did. So the slots in the center, that's that diagonal and then I'm able to go with my pencil or my marker or my chalk, whatever, and do the other two lines. So I have three lines. Two outside ones are for stitching and that middle line, that's going to be the one that we cut after we do those two stitches. Of course we're going to open it up and we're going to press towards that dark side and we're gonna have four half square triangles from each color, but we're only gonna be using three of those four, just so you know, you'll have a little bit of extra. So you're gonna see me do one of these with some, some camera shots as I go, and I'll see you at the end with a bunch of half square triangles so we can continue this main block. Let's get stitching. and we're back with all of our half square triangles all nicely squared and pretty and remember we're only using three of the four we have that little nine patch conglomerate right here and grab your little rectangle pieces because we're gonna need those so I'm gonna lay everything out and then we'll talk about putting everything together let's go Right, so here's kind of what the layout looks like. They uh, turned the block, so I turned it too, so it would look similar to your instructions. You'll see all of the, the three uh, half square triangles in each corner are all pointing, pointing in that same direction towards that block. And isn't it fun? I picked two different scrappy pieces of fabric. Yay! I love scrappy and then the little rectangle is going in there in the middle on each kind of outer area so I kind of want you to look at this like five different spots or areas or, or, or finishing pieces we already have that main one so this is one I'm gonna say that these three pieces on either side that's two and three and then we have the top and the bottom is four and five. So look at them like that because that's going to make more sense when we go to start putting them to pieces because now it'll sort of like look like that 
three rows. But of course, we're going to need to do some piecing first before we can put the rows together. So let's talk about these, uh, the piecing. And I'll uh, point out the that top one because that's what they talk about in the instructions with their little arrows. So you'll do all of these seams. And on each area, it's going to point in towards, when you press it, towards that blank rectangle in the center. So towards the, towards, towards, towards 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 and that's both for this and this now it's the same thing's going to happen for the two sides when you go to do these two seams you're going to press in towards that blank square or rectangle as it were so you'll want to do all of this first so one i would do this side first then this side and then the top and the bottom just because i'd like to do the smaller piecing first after that's all done, we'll then have two complete sides and you'll be able to combine them to the big block there in the middle. And it's going to get pressed out towards away from away from that main block so that it'll nest up really nicely because remember, these two seams are pressing the opposite way. And then we'll press, we'll, we'll sew the top row and we'll sew the bottom one and we'll press again, away from that big block. If that feels any bulky, really bulky for you, because that's a lot of fabric right here in this corner, feel free to open it up. I may play with it myself, just so that you take, just so that you know. And I do wanna point out in the instructions, you'll see, see that half square triangle? It is not going to match up to any of these seams over here on the side. So don't worry about it needing to, you know, go in right with that square. It's actually going to be closer to the middle, which is nice because that means we don't have to match seams there. I like it when we don't have to match seams. I don't have to worry about. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Okay, so I'm going to get started and start piecing. I'm going to take a bunch of pictures as I go so you can see what I'm doing. And uh, if I come up with any problems along the way, I will explain them all but this looks pretty good to me so I'm gonna get to that sewing machine and I'll see you in just a few moments. There we go friends there's that pretty block isn't it nice? Let me turn it over because I did go ahead and open up those seams, those last two seams between the rows. And that's because I felt it gave me better points here at that big bulkiness in the corners. So feel free to do the same thing. Um, I just want to again point out these are a lot of small blocks here. So you need to make extra special care that you're cutting these accurately and then you're using a really good quarter inch seam. In fact, I do uh, a scant when I'm doing something this small, a scant quarter inch, which is basically about a thread or two shy of a quarter, just to make sure I have uh, what I need for when I put everything together. It makes life a little easier, you know. It's easier to cut down than to cut back. All right, so give this guy a nice little press. Maybe use some starch, set it aside, and let's take a look at the accent strips. Okay, hey, welcome back. Cutting directions for those accent strips. We have backgrounds one, three, and four. You'll have, you see we have a dozen or so strips here, little rectangles. And from backgrounds three and four are some squares, some bigger squares, two from background three, three from background four. And from our fabrics over here, you can see one, two, six, seven, and nine, some smaller squares. They're gonna be paired with these and then some rectangles from one, two, three, four, seven, and nine to go with uh, these rectangles. And look, some fusible web, that's right, some more applique. I love this, this is so cute. So let's divvy these up and I'll show you which accent strip we're doing first. Okay, so looks like we're doing that applique first. And you can see I have a little template here of the hexagon. This is 
from your instructions. I just cut a little template out with some paper and put it on some a uh, little backer board to make it easy for me. Um, because you know I I, uh, I like to conserve my fusible web. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out squares that are just going to be a little bit smaller than this, just like the instructions say. Then I'll be able to trace this onto the squares, applique that to these, and then the hexagons, once they're cut out, they're going to be placed on the different backgrounds. And it's kind of cool because this time the accent strip is using two different colors. We haven't seen this, I don't think, in this as so far. So I'm excited to see what this is going to do. Um, please remember to look at the instructions on whatever fusible web you're using. I like the Light Easy Steam 2. That's my favorite. And I'll show you why here in just a second as we go through the applique. And so I'm going to set these guys aside for a second. And we're going to do a little in-depth on the appliques. Let's go. All right, so if you read the instructions, the instructions will say to cut squares that are about a quarter of an inch smaller than the squares that we're going to be appliquing. And if you've watched any of my videos before, you know that I like to conserve my fusible web as much as possible. So I don't like to waste a lot. So I have my little template that I have here of the size of the hexagon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace this five times because I have five squares here. And then when I cut them out, I'm going to leave a little extra all the way around. So let me trace these real quick, five of them. Now that I have these all ready to go, I'll just cut it out roughly in between each. And there we go. So now I can get rid of the template because I don't need it anymore. And I'm going. All right. So here's the finished square. It's already been adhered once. If I peel that back, there's the adhesive on that side. But before I do that, I want to cut out the actual applique hexagon. And there we go. You can see I've done that to all of them. So there's our four or five, excuse me, little hexagons. So, the, so these now get placed on the background squares that we have. And if you look at the directions, it'll show you which colors match up with which of the two backgrounds. Now, I'm doing a scrappy version, so obviously all my colors as far as backgrounds are concerned are a little off so mine is not going to look exactly like the instruction but maybe this will give you license to move things around as you want after all it's your quilt if you don't like the layout that it shows in the book this is your opportunity to make the quilt your own and do your own thing no quilt police here so there's my five squares and I'm just gonna put these on different things. Now I got this yellow one, so I have a peachy kind of color and a greenish kind of color. So let's, I think maybe it sticks out a little bit better on that peachy one. And let's just, uh, let's just do the rest and see what I come up with. Okay, there you go. I think this is going to be the color choices that I'm going to go with and the order that I'm going to go with as well. So one of them will be separate, either this guy or this guy. And I did that on purpose because these are solids where the rest of these are prints and so I'm keeping them separate from the four that's going to be grouped together and the one lonesome one. And then if you also notice, the pieces are not squarely put on 
the block. They're all a little off a little bit, maybe just a slightly off center, maybe turn just a little bit. So this is your opportunity again to decide if you want it to be perfectly symmetrical or you know back and forth or if you want it to look just like the pattern and have it be slightly askew. It's completely up to you. There are no wrong moves. There are no wrong answers here. You decide what you like for your quilt. So what I'm gonna do is because of this product that I'm using, I'm just gonna peel off the other backing here. So there's the adhesive and you notice, like I said, it's a little tacky, which is why I like it. And I'm gonna put it on the square. And again, because it's like that post-it note, it's easy to peel off if I want to, if I didn't like that placement, or if I didn't get it centered the way I want it to be centered. I will remind you to make sure it's for further enough away from the edge because you, you don't want it to be creeping up on that quarter of an inch seam that we're gonna be doing when we put these together. So once you have your, your hexagons all placed on your squares, I'm gonna give this another press, it's, uh, again, Read your directions for how long and how, how hot the iron should be, and then it will be permanently adhered to this block. So I'm going to go do that real quick, and I'll see you in just a bit. All right, so there's my, my five squares. Everything's permanently adhered. Now before we put all of these together in the accent strip, we're going to need to do uh, applique stitch around the edge because if you remember if you watch any of the other videos we always do a little stitch around the side just to you know a little safety measure to make sure the applique stays in place the uh, he suggests to do a blanket stitch at width 2.0 and length 3.0 i usually do 3.0 3.0 that's just me um, but if you have a different stitch that you prefer or a satin stitch uh, just a, a plain straight stitch along the edge if you have something fun a little decorative one Now's the time to break that out. And you also want to think about what kind of thread you want to use. I've been using the background, uh, something that blends into the background. So like there's the, that's the one that I'll use for this kind of peachy yellowish color. And, or you could, you could use the ones that match the, uh, the pretty colors. So an orange for the orange, a purple for the purple. Or you can use Mono Poly, or you can use something completely different. I know somebody that's doing a black around the edges of everything to give it a little pop, a little kind of nice definition of the background to the color. So it's your quilt. You do what I want, and I'm going to go do what I want, and I'll see you in just a moment with applique stitches around our applique hexagons. I'll be right back. All right, so I'm back and I finished that blanket stitch around all of the little cute little hexagons. So we're ready to put these together. I think I'm gonna have my little turquoise plain one be the lonesome guy and we'll put all of these four together to make that first accent strip. So we're gonna do these seams and we're gonna press everything towards the right. In fact, I think I'm going to switch the order up and do it this way so that I can have this guy at the top and this one at the bottom. That way it'll look with that turquoise one because we know that other accent strip goes this way. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put these seams together and press everything towards that final orange one there. So that will be similar like you see in the book and I'll be back in just a moment. There it is, all done, pressed, and ready to go. So let's set these pieces aside and grab all those little rectangles that we still have left. All right, so there's what we have left for the second accent strip, the six different colors and the little background pieces. So you'll see in the book, I think it uses the red one as an example. You're gonna flank each of these bigger colored rectangles with the background piece. So we're going to do these seams on either side. We're going to press towards that background and we're going to do this with each of the pieces. And that's a pretty easy little uh, to-do list. So I'll just do this one 
with a couple of pictures and then when we have all of them finished we'll get back together and talk about the order and the layout. Let's get stitching. Alright, so there's our blocks all done and pressed towards those backgrounds. So let's talk about the layout. In the instructions, you'll see that the layout is red, yellow, purple, blue, green, and orange. And the fun part is, is that every other one is turned horizontally. You know, give it a little interest so it's not just you know, a rail fence. It's a, a turned rail fence. Isn't that cute? All right, so that's the order. We're going to put uh, the seams together. Everything is getting get pressed towards that orange except for that last one because remember that's what lines up with the other accent strip. So it gets pressed towards the left. All right, so I'll take this to the sewing machine and take a few pictures as I go and I'll see you at the end with our second accent strip all finished. Let's go. All right, there is the finished second accent strip all nicely pressed and ready to go so you know what happens next those cutting directions for the block assembly gather your background two pieces and then all the other pieces that we put together and let's assemble this final block of the illusion sampler let's go all right so here's all the pieces the main block the first accent strip and the one that we just finished sitting right behind it and all of our pieces from background two to fill in around so let's set this guy up of course the block goes in the upper right corner and the accent strip with the appliques is off to the right matched up here with that yellow to the green and our lonely guy underneath Cute little appliques. So now let's fill in with these other pieces. The lone square is in the corner, of course. We gotta put the sashing around the big block. The two smaller ones go on the sides and the two longer strips are on the top and bottom. There we go. And of course, the last two big pieces are flanking the accent strips. All right, say it with me, everyone. One last time for the record, we're going to start up here with this big old block and sash it first. Do the two sides, press towards the background, then the top and the bottom again, press towards the background. Move over here to the right and put the background against the accent strip and press towards the background. Uh, left side's done, right side's done, so just finish this seam here in the middle-ish and press towards that big block so that way that big top portions all finished. Let's move all the way down to that bottom row and put the backgrounds on either side of the cute little applique press towards the backgrounds and then you can add that row to our rail fence accent strip. Press down towards the bottom. Top is done, bottom is done, just this last seam right here. And we're gonna press up towards the background strip. All of this stuff is in your instructions. Just pay attention to the little arrows and which way it points. I, of course, will take pictures as I go and I'll see you at the end with our finished block number 12 of the Illusion Sampler. Let's go. Okay, friend, there it is. Block number 12 of the 12 month block of the month program of the Illusion Sampler by Banyan Batiks. This was my scrappy version, of course. Let me flip her over. Remember all of these little points are quarter inch points. So that's a good, 
thing to look out for when you're sewing them. I aimed for them, of course, to make sure those points stay nice. This guy has been nicely pressed. Use a little best press to keep it nice and crisp because although this is the last block, we still have to put all these blocks together to finish the quilt. So I hope that you'll stay tuned for that as well. Thank you so much as I've gone through this wonderful little pattern. I hope you've enjoyed it. Give me the old thumbs up if you have and subscribe if you haven't already and take a look at those previous videos. Thanks again for joining me and I hope to see you in the next video where I put all these little blocks together. Stay tuned and keep closing. Bye-bye.